everybody, Logan here back in the Planted Cuisine home kitchen and today we're going to do the very first recipe video. Uh, really excited about that of course this is really the most requested video content. Um, I'm not somebody who is a big recipe person, very intuitive, just kind of throwing things together in a kitchen. And the truth is, is that's where I want all home cooks to get to that point where you're just throwing things together. You don't need to do measurements with the obvious exception of baking and things like that. It's really nice to be able to get to that point. Um, I, I really see recipes as somewhat of a barrier because if you're always reliant upon recipes and you're following exactly if something goes wrong it's very hard you don't necessarily know how to correct it so it's really really important to understand the basic fundamental building blocks of flavor and and so if something's you know too sweet or doesn't have enough kick or punch or whatever it might be uh, you know how to correct it on your own and sometimes if we're just following recipes that can be a hard thing to do so all of the recipes that you'll see me doing video demonstration wise are going to be, uh, a lot of times I won't use those exact measurements, but in the description, I'm going to go ahead and give you that, that recipe to follow, but know that it's always going to be adaptable. You should adapt it to your own palate, especially when it comes to acidity or salt or sweet, things like that. And then the other key part of this for me is, is talking about seasonality and, and sourcing local. And so when I'm putting together these videos, I'm always going to give you uh, good suggestions for replacements and substitutes to keep it local as possible. And if you're working with a recipe and you'd like to keep it local and say like for us here in Michigan, we don't have lemons. Um, well, we have lemons, but I try to avoid using them because they're not let local and they're coming from a long ways away. So for instance, if you know, if you have those situations, always just give me, uh, you know, shoot me an email or, or send me a message on social media and just ask and I'll, I'm happy to provide you with some suggestions. So I'll, I'll be discussing those in videos, especially today. So today's first recipe is one of the the bases that I use in so many different ways and so many different uh, dinners that I do. And, and one of the ones I really love showing people because it's so simple, it makes use of a very underutilized vegetable, which is turnips, and it's just delicious. So it's a turnip cream sauce. And today we're gonna make a, a an aioli of sorts. So it's gonna be garlicky, acidic, um, has some olive oil in there, but just know that this is a base you can take in a lot of different directions. I'll probably do another video series where we make like more of like an Alfredo pasta sauce out of it. But this baseline turnip cream can go in so many different directions. And I'll probably throw some su suggestions out there as the video gets going. So. Turnip aioli is what we're making today. Uh, it's a couple days before the Super Bowl, and I'll actually be using this on some of the plant-based nachos that I'll have at the Super Bowl party we're hosting. So very, very versatile. Uh, anyways, I can talk all day. Let's go ahead and get to the recipe portion of the video. All right, here we go. So this is absolutely all we need for this recipe. So the main ingredients are turnips. So we have a couple of turnips here from the store. Uh, there's all different varieties of turnips. Um, these are the only ones that uh, are available at this point in the winter. Um, now this is going to be a white cream sauce, uh, aioli. So you could, if you wanted to, peel this purple part off. I, I just, I really discourage uh, peeling. Um, the, the skin interacts with the, the soil, so if you're getting your, your produce from uh, great local sources, organic, regenerative sources, those are the, that's the most nutrient-rich part of the, the plant itself, so the vegetable. So I say keep them on. It's going to not give you perfectly pure white sauce, but is what it is. Um, so we have our turnips and then just some basic seasoning. So again, the idea of keeping it local as possible. So we have some garlic, of course, aioli, uh, pink Himalayan salt, some uh, black pepper, which is, of course, that is not local. We do have some sumac, which is going to be in place along with some white balsamic vinegar. It's going to be in place of uh, lemon juice, which would be traditional in an aioli. Um, and then we have some really good high quality cold pressed olive oil from Fustini's. So these are, this is it. And we got a pot here 
and I'll just show, whip this up real quick and show you just how easy it is. So we have these turnips, you can kind of get a sense of, there's a kind of a garlic bulb and how big these are. Uh, you're, you're gonna find turnips in all different sizes in the store. I would say this is like a, a big one, a larger one, and more of a small one. So two medium size would work. And this is going to give us just about like a squeeze bottle, about a quarter or so of aioli when we're all said and done. So first step is to chop up and cook the turnips. Um, the cooking process is very simple here with uh, this recipe. So we have our turnips and all we wanna do is just cube it. You can go any size you want. Um, the smaller, the faster it's gonna take, or cook is of course. Um, not really gonna cut off too much, just a little bit of those knobby ends that can be a little tough. Okay, so we have our turnips here cut up in just in a small pot, medium sized pot. And we're just gonna cover this just until, just a little bit below. We don't wanna submerge. Anytime you're boiling something or you're cooking a vegetable, you don't wanna submerge it in water cause you're gonna lose flavor. So just in a uh, kind of come up to maybe halfway full. So not covering these turnips and then put a lid over it. So it's ain't a steam just fine. Those, the top is ain't a steam just as, and cook just as well as the ones in the water. So we'll get that going on the stove. Now it's time to do the garlic. And as we were discussing before, uh, you know, these are, it's adaptable recipes. So I love garlic. I, I go ham on the garlic. So it just depends on your palate. Uh, a good aioli, I think, has a lot of a lot of kick to it from the garlic. Also, you'll notice that we have some some green shoots sprouting out already. So it's going to make the garlic less pungent. It is perfectly fine to use. Do not throw garlic out at this point. Um, so hard to say. Let's think about this. In the recipe, I'm in, probably going to head and say three cloves raw garlic and I'm going to put in like five. <laughs> so just again, it's, it's, it's all about your palate and what you're looking for, what your preference is, and that's why recipes can be so tricky. And a lot of times when you have recipes in a cookbook and stuff, they tend to be more mild, more subdued, which is also an, an issue I take with recipes is they're just not really cooking for flavor. I like, I mean, if you're not a cook and like do something like, man, do it. So we're going to use five. The recipe is gonna show three. Uh, these are about your standard size garlic cloves. If you're working with bigger or smaller, adapt from there. Just gonna crush these. And then this is going into a blender so you don't need to do anything else. You don't need to, I need to keep the green on there. Just, that's it. You don't need to chop it any further from that. And you'll also notice I switch cutting boards. If you don't already do it in your own home kitchen, anything that, so usually it's nice to have for like garlic, onions, ginger, thing, turmeric, things like that. Have a cutting board that's easily washable. For all things that don't have too much of a flavor, a nice wooden cutting board. And then fruits, of course, you want a separate cutting board as well. Uh, you'll just notice, especially when you're doing certain things that the flavor will come up off of these, especially if you're using wood. So just be mindful of that uh, when you're in the kitchen. All right, we're back. So we have our turnips, and again, the idea is to boil them on you know medium high heat until they're nice and tender. It's better to overcook than undercook because we are blending them. If they are a little too al dente, then it, then you might not have a perfect silky smooth uh, sauce or aioli. So here we go. Uh, there's a little bit of leftover water in here. Now you do want to drain this out, so I'm going to do that real quick. So now we have our turnips and it's important to know that these have absorbed a lot of water. So when going to blend, we don't need to add excess liquid with the exception of the couple of uh, seasonings that we're using. Uh, it, it's in a puree really nicely because there's a high water content. So go ahead and ideally wait for these to cool, which I'm not doing because it's a lot easier to work with. Hot, hot, and hotter. Uh, don't do this. Um, yeah, normally you want to just run them under cold water. That'll help. So, 
have our turnips here. And again, I'm not going to use uh, measurement tools right now, but uh, I'll put them in the description. So we have some salt. Definitely want to salt it up because this is A and B and aioli. So I'd say that's about a teaspoon of salt. You can, of course, always taste and uh, you know season as you go. Blend it, try it, season it again. Those garlic cloves, uh, right in there whole. Uh, a little bit of a fresh cracked pepper. Now the turnips do have a naturally uh, uh, some spice to them. So just be mindful of that. So to go easy on the pepper. Uh, olive oil is important here. The fat content is in be nice for that silky smooth texture. I'd say about three tablespoons. Obviously you can limit it if you'd like. You don't even have to have olive oil. It'll blend up just as nice without it. But flavor wise, silky smooth, the fat content is really nice. You could do lemon juice. Uh, a tablespoon of lemon juice would be about right. Instead to keep it more Local, I'm going to use some sumac, so go a little bit in there for that lemony flavor. And then some vinegar. So again, if you're using lemon juice, which I'll put in the recipe, you don't need to use these. Um, but uh, again, I need to keep the, the fruit that is not available in Michigan out of this recipe. So that's it. Uh, I'm using a magic bullet. Now I do have like a really nice high quality blender, but again, trying to keep the kitchen equipment reasonable in these videos. So this is a magic bullet, a uh, great, uh, relatively cheap investment uh, for blending. So we have this, just saying go ahead and blend it up. All right, so here we have our blended aioli. Now, because I use sumac, it's going to have this red hue to it. If you go lemon juice, you're not going to have that. It'll be much more of a pure white. So you see kind of the red specks in there, which personally I love. Sumac, by the way, is one of the best sources for vitamin C. So even if you say you live in Florida and you got, or California and you got a lemon tree and you got a hundred out there, uh, tr give sumac a try. Uh, it's it's really delicious, and it is it does grow in a lot of places. Uh, you can really forage for it if you know of a good, clean uh, spot to get it. Um, anyway, so we have this turnip aioli now. Give it a try, see what you think. So aioli, you want it to be pungy, you want that acidity, you want the garlic, which is what we have here exactly. So I'm really quite content with this. You can mess with it. I would say this is on a little on the thick side. So. Again, as opposed to just dumping in the excess water and potentially ending up with something too runny, it's much better just to be able to add liquid in. So I like this. If you want it to be a little, little runnier, obviously you could just add a little water, a little olive oil if you wanted to as well, either way, uh, just to get it to the consistency that you want. I love squeeze bottles uh, in terms of being for ease of access use and access. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, this aioli in a squeeze bottle. All right, just to give you a little sense of the color and what we're working with, here you go. This is our nice sauce. A uh, nice benefit of using a squeeze bottle is the control that you have over it. So uh, there you go. Turnip aioli, whoops, cream sauce, great consistency holding on the plate as you can tell. And again, this sauce can be used in such a wide variety of ways um, in so many different recipes. So again, we took turnips and made a aioli. You can take turnips as a base. Uh, they're white, you could make a white cream sauce. You could do nutritional yeast in there and Italian seasonings and things like that. Make a pasta cream sauce with some mushrooms, etc. Really delicious. Uh, you could make a curry out of it. I mean, turnips are a fantastic base. I love using vegetables as a base for different sauces. We'll get more into that world uh, moving forward and show you all the different ways. But for now, this is an excellent aioli. So good for dipping like sweet potato fries uh, or just regular fries, so on and so forth. Um, and just a great sauce to just put over a one bowl meal or different grains and vegetable, roasted vegetables. Again, the, the possibilities and the use for this sauce is really unlimited. Cool it properly, unlike I did just now in this squeeze bottle, and it'll keep in the fridge for at least a week, 10 days easy, and just try it and make sure it's good. But such a versatile sauce and so easy. I mean, the, 
And cooking time included, this probably took about 15 minutes tops. So fantastic, turnip aioli, there you go. Uh, stay tuned for more recipes and video content coming soon.